Good evening, folks, and welcome to Summertime Blues. I'm your host, Angus Critiques, and with me, as always, is Bert Chapman. You excited for our second pay-per-view, Bert? I am pumped up for our second pay-per-view, Angus. However, this is just a pre-show for the pay-per-view. Actual pay-per-view is next week, August 27th. Be there, kids. Be fun. Well, you're technically not wrong, Bert. Tonight is, in fact, just the pre-show for Summertime Blues. However, we got two great matches tonight. And that's still good news. Right you are, Bert. We've got one-on-one -on -one Duke Quinn versus Tommy Prime, as well as a triple threat match to determine who the best police officer is? It'll make sense when you see it, Angus. Let's get on with our first match. Come on down here, Tommy Prime. Now, Tommy made some backstage wheeling and dealings with you last week, Bert. It took me two weeks ago, Angus. Not the point I'm trying to make, Bert. What is the point you're making? Because right now you're not making any sense. Look at that handsome young man. You told Tommy that he'd get a match one-on-one -on -one with the Dukester if he beat the crap out of Gus Reviews for you. And he did just that. I'm a man of my word. He gets his match. Gus is injured. It's all great. While Gus Reviews is injured, he is still able to compete next week. Huh. Well, hopefully he doesn't win. Hopefully he twists his ankle on the way to the ring and has to, like, hobble around like a sad puppy. Well, despite as unsportsmanlike as it may be, you both had a deal, and you're keeping up your end of the deal. I you see, Angus, I am a good, honest man. Sometimes. If only that could be all the time. Either way, Tommy's been wanting this shot. He's wanted the Dukester. He wants those tag titles. He's got a vendetta against that poor boy in the pink trunks. I don't think there's anything about Duke Coin that's poor, Bert. There he is in... not his pink trunks. Huh. I guess I only got one of the three right. What the hell is he coming down here for in his Duke suit? He can't wrestle in that. I don't know, Bert, but he's grabbing a mic. I think he's got something to say. Why, hello there, Mr. Prime. You pulled quite a few strings to get here, didn't you? Chatting up the boss, doing his dirty work. Really classy stuff there. See? That's the difference between you and I. At least one of the differences. I'm handsome, rich, talented, and you're, well, not. But I'm also smart. I'm smart enough to not put my perfectly toned and tanned body on the line to try and get a shot at a match. I'll just pay a little money here, write a check or two there, and voila, I get what I want. And that's exactly what I did tonight. You see, Tommy? Right here? This is a pre-show. I'm Duke frickin' Quinn. I'm not gonna fight on a pre-show. That's beneath me. But don't let those rags you call wrestling tights get into a twist. You'll still have a match. It just won't be against me. It'll be against... My new bodyguard. Stand your ground and fight. <laughs> what do you think of that, Bert? Logan Weber is Duke Quinn's bodyguard. Oh, that little slimy son of a dukester. He doesn't even have to fight you under the bar. It doesn't matter. Oh, this is great. This is a great day. It's almost as good as you getting choke slammed. I would prefer if you didn't mention such tragic things about my past. Uh, the only thing that can make him better is if Dukester curb stomped you. That'd be great. All right, you're walking on thin ice, mister. I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Chapman. It's, that's just too perfect. I'm not sure if perfect is the right word for this, Angus. I only use that in certain occasions. Like when I'm talking about my mustache. Well, Tommy Prime certainly got his work cut out for him. Wasn't expecting you going up against this German behemoth of a man. Let's see how it goes. Match is underway and already into the Colin Ebo tie-up. You know, I should, I should give Tommy a different match. We, which this is just, oh, this is malarkey, Angus. Calm down, Bert. Malarkey, I say! Match is already underway. Let the people have their fun. Give Tommy a match some other time. I mean, Tommy's gonna lose this. I mean, he was not prepared. He was going to face the Dukester. Instead, this Matt wrestler comes out. He's all technical and crap. He's, he's not a good way to do things. How are you guys supposed to prepare for a fight if you don't know who's gonna be your challenger? 
Well, that's the whole point of the non-stop championship. Oh, kick to the stomach there. And a suplex from Logan Weber. But yeah, Bert, the whole point of the non-stop championship is you don't know who the opponent's going to be. It's someone new all the time. Yeah, well, that, that's, that's, this taste. Shut up. Good rebuttal there, Bert. And a nice arm drag from Tommy Prime. Deuster off on the side, watching his new bodyguard putting in the work. Just watching his new bodyguard get knee to the head, more like it. I've always wondered if it's a good idea to actually wear, like, dress pants in a wrestling ring. It seems like it would hinder your progress a lot. I don't know. I've never done it. Another nasty wrestling from Mr. Prime. I mean, you've been in a ring in the suit before. You got your ass choke slammed. We've talked about this thing. It's took me to get diagrams out again. And a spear from Weber to Prime! Well, looks like Logan Weber is doing quite well in this matchup. I wonder how much Dukester pays him. I don't know. Twenty, thirty dollars maybe? I think it's a little more than that, Bert. I don't think uh, Logan would do DDT to Logan! I don't think uh, Mr. Weber would take such a little amount of money for such a dangerous position. The dude was already a wrestler. What's more dangerous about it now? Well, he's got to fight off the Dukester's opponents now. He's got to take care of someone else. And he goes down hard. Tommy Prime going for the pin. And Weber able to kick out of it. Dukester probably saying something not very nice to Prime right there. Certainly enjoying a look of pain on his face. And Tommy's taking control, knee to the back, and a takedown. Right on the neck, that is a not comfortable way to do things. Let me tell you, the less, the less you get your neck involved in life, the better. And Tommy Prime is going for the prime time face buster to Weber. And Quinn is not happy about this. This may be the end for Logan. Kick out at two and a half. Logan remains in the fight. He's already back to his feet. He's got Prime up. Olympic Slam! Come on, Prime. Don't be a chump. Kick out, man. Kick out. You got this. I don't think he's got this. He's got it! Good job, boy. And Prime stumbling back to his feet. Logan Weber with the Irish whip. Sending Prime into the corner. Deuster giving some orders here. Big clothesline from Weber. I can clearly see why Quinn hired Logan to be his bodyguard. This dude is relentless. And unfortunately for Tommy, it doesn't look like Logan's done. Nobody might be done after this. Logan setting up his finishing move. Pile driver suplex! Right on the top of Tommy Prime's skull. They banned that thing in WWE. Why is it still legal here? Oh, I had no idea. Look at the leg on one and a two. And Logan Weber has done it. That was just pure nonsense in every sense of the word, Angus. Duke Quinn was supposed to be in that match, not Logan Weber. This is malarkey to the fullest extent of the word. If you look into a dictionary, look at the word malarkey, you'll probably find an odd definition, but that definition means Dukester. Well, Prime didn't go out without a fight. I mean, look at this face buster. That thing is not comfortable. It just still wasn't enough to put away the German Matt Wrestler. The so Matt Wrestler didn't even use a submission, he's a freaking pile driver. This is this, it's a dark day for SNT, my friend. Ain't your friend Britt, but smart move on the part of the Dukester. He technically didn't do anything wrong. He got someone to take his place. And that someone is a big old check waiting for him in the locker room. This ain't over, Dukester. Oh no. Welcome back to the Summertime Blues Pre-Show in Washington, D.C. It is now time for an Extreme Rules Triple Threat match with a bizarre theme to it. Bert, would you care to explain what the best police officer means? Uh, sure thing, Angus. Well, as we've seen him before, we have Inspector Javert here in SNT. And we also have two more police officers who want to stake their claim to show that they are the best in the business. They want to show that they are the law. Aside from Javert, have we seen the other two competitors in SNT before? No, we haven't, Angus. They are two new brand debuts for Saturday Night Thunder. That's a pretty big deal, making your debut at a pay-per-view. Let's not keep these fine folks waiting, Angus. They paid good money to be here. 
Let's get our second man out here. Oh, I recognize that music. Oh, we went there, Angus. We got him. From Mega City 1, Judge Dredd. Oh, this is going to be a good one. Wait, is this 95 Dredd or 2012 Dredd? This is 2012 Dredd. Oh, this is going to be a good one. You're not a very good human being, Bert, but damn, you get some good people for SNT. Uh, thank you, I think. So we have a French inspector and a futuristic cop. Our third man is going to have a hard time overcoming these two behemoths. We've got a man that's cold and calculating, and a man that is... Judge Dredd's just the coolest dang thing ever, isn't he? Yeah, he's pretty awesome, Bert. I'll give you that one. He already says he's the law, and he is going to prove that tonight. I can't wait to see our third man. That's going to be a big surprise. Surprise is definitely a word you could use. Um, Bert? Yes, Angus. That's Woody. Yes, it is. That's Woody from Toy Story. Yes, you stated the obvious. What's wrong with that? What the hell is Woody from Toy Story doing here? He's a sheriff. Uh, um, damn, that makes sense for this match. Why Woody? Woody obviously has something to prove. He is an officer of the law. He wants to prove that in this squared circle against Javert and Judge Dredd. It's, it's a fight people have wanted to see for years, Angus. Don't deny him this great opportunity. I, I just wasn't expecting it. I'm so confused with life right now. It's called being middle-aged, Angus. Welcome to the club. I'm like 23, Bert. Wait, seriously? Yeah. Oh, that, that doesn't make me feel good about myself anymore. Well, I guess, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to what could possibly be the weirdest match we've had in SNT so far. Yeah, it's a pretty odd combination, I'll give you that, Angus. And our match is underway, and already Dread with a DDT to Woody. And Dread is taking full control of this match. So while Dread's already flown away with this match so far, is he your uh, pick to win there, Bert? I don't know, I'm thinking Javert might have a good shot. He has more experience in the ring than other of these two men. He's been in here before against Dean Ambrose. Make a good point, Bert. I'm just wondering if Dredd's going to have the stamina to keep up that intensity throughout this match. We'll just have to wait and see what police brutality unfolds, because this is an Extreme Rules match. And Javert going over with a suplex. And Woody DDT! Woody stands tall, Javert getting back to his feet. Javert is looking for some toys of his own. He's got a baseball bat. Ooh, catching Dredd on the back of the head and Woody on the front of the head. And knocking Woody down. Dredd getting the bat away from Javert. A swing and a miss. And Javert with a backstabber! And Woody's getting in on this action. Just letting Dredd get back to his feet. Give him a little hand there. And he is laying into him there, Javert. These two, oh, I thought they were going for a double team. Woody has turned on Javert. It was only a matter of time before the alliance would crumble. You can't really rely on partnerships in a match like this, Bert. Everyone's out for themselves. Javert's got Dredd throwing him across the ring like a sex butt. Another DDT from Woody. Javert is getting stomped into the ground. Looks like Dredd's taking the time to go and search for a little something to give him an advantage. I think a sledgehammer is good for a situation like this. And he's waiting for the suplex to end. Now Dredd, right in the stomach of the sheriff. We've got a judge, an inspector, and a sheriff. This is a very odd combination. I still can't quite get over it with a big kick to the face of Dredd. The one thing I'm wondering is why is Dredd still wearing his protective gear? That's got to give him some sort of unfair advantage. I normally agree with you, Bert, but I'm not sure. I mean, he still seems to be taking quite a bunch of hits. Yeah, I'll give you that. After a couple of nice smacks to the face. There's up in the corner, Javert, Woody going for something. Trying to choke out Inspector Javert. 
Drez got the hammer back. Getting a nice little nice little couple taps on the butt there for Woody. Woody stomping a mud hole into Javert. An alley-oop bomb. Javert is down. Dread with a wicked bull hammer. And he just turned Woody into a pile of wet noodles. Woody kicking out. It's going to take more than that to put these three tough lawmen away. And Javert and Dread just beating down the poor toy sheriff. Woody getting Irish ripped in the corner. Dread taking out Javert. And he's going over to Woody. And just wailing on that poor son of a something. And Dread is just laying into Woody. He's getting him back to his feet. Woody able to power out of it. Dread. Oh, smack to the face. Woody's got Javert. Is he going for a suplex? Yes, he is. Javert down looking up at the lights again. Now he's ripping to the corner. And Dread. Oh, he's got Woody. He is beating that poor sucker down. I think Javert's just looking on in all of this. This is not going to end well for Woody. Oh, Javert nearly getting it. Oh, my goodness. Judge Dredd with a big drop kick to Woody and Javert hitting him on the way. Big boots! These three are relentless to each other. And into the ring post. Oh my good golly gosh, this is a lot more brutal than I thought it would be. You have three officers of the law here. You didn't think this is going to end brutally? You know, hindsight's 2020, Angus. We all make mistakes sometimes. Into the apron, Dread is down. And now Woody, sending Javert back in. And an elbow right to the nose. Woody rolling back into the ring. Looks like Dread's got some plans on the outside, dismantling that stunt announce table. And Woody's got Javert up onto his back. That is not going to end well. He goes slamming down. And Woody going for the pin. Dread there to break it up. The match, it continues. Kind of don't want to see it end. I can kind of agree with you there, Bert. And Dread with a big boot to Javert. Looks like he's trying to knock Woody out. Woody back in the ring. Oh, not back in the ring long enough. Woody's on the outside. Javert is struggling to get back to his feet. Dread is in control. And Woody getting some offense in. He's going for a suplex. Suplex onto the monitor. That has got to hurt his back. I guess it's a good thing he's wearing that body armor after all. And Dread goes into the ring post. Javert taking control. Woody goes back into the ring. And Javert follows suits. And Dread's back in as well. All three men taking this back inside the ring where it belongs. And Javert backstabber to Woody. Dredd just angrily throwing that bat around. And Woody is back to his feet. And Javert is down. Woody is trying to get some offense in here. And he has just tackled Javert. Looks like he's going for it again. Atomic drop. And he slams the French inspector as hard as he can on the mat. And Dredd throwing Woody on the outside. Oh, Woody. Woody is not in a good position here. He is not. That table is ready to be broken. And Dredd's the one that wants to do it. Javert's still unconscious in the ring. And Dredd's got him up. Rock bottom through the table. Has anyone told these guys that this is just the pre-show? And there's no title on the line. You guys are just, just giving it all you got. Good show. Look at that table we constructed. And Javert putting the pin on Woody. Woody able to kick out. Dread breaking up. I'm not sure what happened, but Dread's going for the pin now. Javert definitely breaking that one up. Dread might be in a bit of trouble here. Javert's got him, throwing him across the ring. And Woody running back into the fray, slamming Javert down. And Woody going for the pin. Is that going to be enough to put him away? Oh my god, Woody has won! Sometimes it's the man you least expect, Angus. I don't think anyone saw Woody taking the victory in that match. I didn't either, Bert. That was one hell of a beatdown between those three men. 
and I think this officially gives Woody the right to call himself the law. I can't agree with you more, Bert, and look at that. After a rock bottom through the table, he came back to win it all. It's an inspirational story of the little toy that could. Good job, Woody. And we'll see you folks on August 27th for the full Summertime Blues show. See you in a week, folks. Good night.